Okay, hello everyone. So <clears throat> today I would love to, like to talk about an effect called time dilation and it's a second consequence of the postulates of special relativity. Uh, you may remember that last time, uh, I guess I forgot to start a video. Remember, you may remember that last time uh, I mentioned that Mm. the meaning or the really the implication of the relativity of simultaneity the fact that what's simultaneous in one frame is not simultaneous in the other is that it really implies that time uh, sort of flows at a different rate in different reference frames and that was a remark at the very end, and maybe it didn't go through, uh, but what we will do today, we will really explore that idea that time flows at different rates and different frames. Okay, so today we will do something called time dilation. Just a second. And you will notice that I'm using iPad today. We'll see how that works. So any periodic process can be used as a clock. Okay. And let's consider the following clock. It's a very odd clock. And then I will argue that it doesn't matter what kind of a clock you use. And just a second, let me choose a different one. Okay. So uh, it's a following clock. So you have a light emitter. Okay, so this is a light emitter. And this is a light absorber. Okay. Okay, and this distance right here, let's see, so this is right here, distance D. Let's say this is the floor and this is the ceiling, okay? And the, okay, the height of these emitters and absorbers doesn't matter. And so when a pulse of light is emitted, it reflects, there's a mirror, Okay. And there's a mirror here and it comes back. Okay. And so each cycle is a time required for the signal to go up and back down. One trip up down, that's one cycle. And let's say you can adjust these, right? So um, speed of light is incredibly fast. You, make, you can make this distance large enough that it takes one second, or you just use your room height, so it takes maybe one picosecond, it doesn't matter. So you know the period of one second. One cycle, up and down, okay? So that's a weird clock. Um, and so for observers who are at rest relative to this clock, the time of each cycle is just, It's just uh, two, oops. Uh, it's two times D over C two because it uh, goes up and down. So here I'm describing the observer um, who is at rest 
relative to this clock. In other words, in this reference frame, the two events, the release of the beam and arrival of the beam back to the floor, take place at the same location. Okay, so the two events Okay. at the same location. This, this is the key. In other words, the two events are separated only by time, but not by space. This is important. So in this frame, Okay, let's say I'm gonna put this observer on a spaceship and let this observer go. Okay, so let's say this is Alice. I'm gonna give the light clock to Alice. I'm gonna put her on the spaceship and she will move with some constant velocity. Okay, so now let's say there's another observer, Bob, who is moving relative to the first one. So the so Bob stays on the ground. Alice is moving relative to Bob, so Bob is moving relative to Alice. Okay, so um, let's see. So I'm gonna, let's see if I'm gonna do this. Um, yeah. okay. This is Alice. Okay, so Alice, that's her light clock. Okay, and off she goes with velocity v. Okay, on the other hand, Bob so this is Alice. I'm not gonna do Alice, she's in her spaceship. So for Alice, for Alice. Okay, uh, time of each cycle, I'm gonna call it delta t prime. You will see why I use a prime. It's 2d over c. Okay, done. We've discussed that. Now here's Bob, okay? For Bob, the two events, a release of the light beam and the light beam hits back, uh, the floor of the spaceship or the light beam is captured uh, by this uh, light absorber, they don't take place at the same location, right? I hope you understand that. Because uh, from Bob's perspective, okay, from Bob's perspective, so this is picture number one. So let me draw Bob's perspective. I'm gonna say ground, but really what matters is that Alice is moving relative to Bob. So the clock is moving relative to Bob. So what matters okay. so this is what's important. So for Bob sees this. So here's the emission event. 
right? While the whole apparatus is moving at some moment, Bob can take a snapshot and at that snapshot, emission took place. Now emission, of course, emits rays in all directions, okay? And one of these rays will hit the mirror, okay? The mirror is moving, the rays are moving, so one ray hits the mirror, and now there's a reflection, okay, a bunch of rays, and one of those rays will end up being captured in the light detector. Okay? So for Bob, the ray that left uh, the emitter and, captured, and was captured back by the detector is one particular ray, and this is the trajectory of that ray, okay? Um, of course, all rays move in a straight line, so there's a bunch of other rays, but only this ray was the one that was reflected off of the mirror at just the right angle to come back to the detector, okay? So there's this special ray. And so the question is, what would Bob say is the time required between the emission event and the absorption event? Okay, so delta T equals time between emission and absorption of this ray according to Bob. Now I encourage you to actually pause the camera right now and work it out. I remind you that this distance is D, okay? This distance is D. Light moves with speed C relative to Bob, with the same speed as the speed with which light moves relative to Alice. That's that second posture. It's a very key posture. There's a reason I spent three days building up to it, because it's an extremely unintuitive idea. Okay? But it has a very profound, it has a, a set of prof very profound consequences. So now we're going to reap the benefits of building up to that. So on the one hand, let's do the usual thing. On the one hand, okay, this distance, so this is called D, right? D equals, well, the square root of D squared plus how far does the mirror move? So what's this distance right here? Well, this is a V times delta T over T. It's how far the mirror moves during half of the cycle. So this is a V delta T over T quantity squared. Okay. On the other hand, the usual thing. So before we ran these sorts of arguments for horizontal time, horizontal distance is now for vertical one. Well, D is just speed of light, this, this, this is light, it's moving with speed c, and the time to go from here to here is delta t over two. The time to go from here and back is delta t, so this is half of the cycle. So this is c times delta t over two, okay? And then the usual equate, okay? And we found, find that delta t, we will find that delta t, do the algebra is 2d over the square root, so quadratic equation, uh, c squared minus v squared. I can manipulate this and I will see that this is 2d over c, and the square root one minus v over c quantity squared. And this we will recognize is delta t prime, okay? So what we have found is that Alice and Bob will disagree on how long it took for the whole process to, uh, how long the, the whole process took, okay? Since C is always greater than V, we'll discuss why that is. But as long as V is always less than C, C is greater than, than V, the denominator is always less than one. So delta T is always greater than delta T prime, okay? 
And I will argue in a second that this relationship is true for any clock. It doesn't have to be the light clock. Um, I just used a uh, light clock as an example. It's a very common thought experiment. So. So equality. Okay, if V is not zero, So now we will digest this. This effect is called time dilation. It's a very deep thing. It's not a superficial thing. It's called time dilation. So there are two events. The beam leaves the emitter. The beam comes back at the observer. Bob has his own light clock, okay? And according to his own light clock, this took, uh, for example, three seconds. That's delta T. Alice has her own light clock. According to her light clock, the time interval between the same two physical events, between the emission from the same emitter and absorption, by the same absorber took two seconds. They disagree about how long it took between those two events. So Bob has his own light clock and he's, absorb he's observing the light beam on Alice's light clock and he's timing it with his own clock. And he's finding that the time that he thinks it took for the light to leave and come back is three seconds, whereas Alice thinks that it took two seconds. So that's what this result means, and it's called time dilation. Okay, and in the next part of the video, we will start digesting it, and uh, we will continue doing that. We will continue trying to understand time dilation and how it's related to relativity of simultaneity and how it's related to another effect we'll discuss tomorrow, we'll keep digesting it uh, for a couple of days, three days. Okay, so I'll see you in the next portion.